All I gotta say is you won't get lucky again, because I won't be sick. So, good luck. I hurt you I with you, every I wish shot. You, I wish you right the best hook, of luck. Straight. I wish you the best shot. of luck. I hurt you with every shot, bro. I wish you the best of luck. You were suffering. You were suffering. That everyone was screaming for you. What's happening to him? Hey, the, you thing, were the thing is, bro. I could have postponed the fight. I could have postponed the fight, but I took an IV to get out there and fight you. You cheated. I took an you IV. Cheated. So you cheated. I took an you IV cheated. to be able to, be able to you stand. You cheated. You cheated. You're a cheater. I took an and IV still lost. to be able to and you still to lost. be able to stand up and fight you. Ha, stand up and fight me. You're out so, on the ground. So again, you will not get Nino, lucky again. Nino. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Dima Podcast. It's Neela. And it is Adis. What's up, family? What's up, man? Awesome. Rick Broom came out with his untold story. Well, now I'm about to share something with you guys that nobody knows besides my family and my team. And now you guys. I'm going to try my best to narrate the day of the fight and how it all went down. So leading up to the day of the fight, I was a little under the weather, but nothing that could have affected my performance. The morning of the fight is when things started taking a little turn for the worst. Um, I woke up, was trying to eat breakfast. I couldn't eat anything, unfortunately. My energy was low. I wasn't feeling like myself. I just have to say, we've talked about the Ace family a lot, and so Austin McBroom basically came out three days ago, released a video, and talked about how his fight with Gibb, like his untold story aspect behind the scenes of what had gone on running up to that and the fight how he got sick ended up testing positive for covid after the fact but there were so many things within that that was just like what like what uh, what happened here i agree deals yeah. and i remember when he sent it to me we were talking about it in the pre-brief and there's so many things i want to say about this whole situation first and foremost austin mcbroom and Catherine came out with a video basically saying that we have a huge announcement with this docu kind of thing we're going to release a lot of shit happened pre-fight that we can't really discuss right now but stay tuned the video finally dropped, and now we know that Austin McBroom got COVID or was diagnosed with COVID right before the fight, or he didn't know no, after the until fight. After, after, but like he had COVID leading up to the fight, right? So this was the big like uh, untold story of what happened and why he kind of lost. You know, my older my OGs or my older cousins were like, "Yo." Take the L. When you take an L, no excuses. You took that L. If you decided to get in there and you got L'd up, you got to eat that, right? So a lot of people were writing him off like, okay, now you're going to come up with the excuse now. Um, but how do you feel about how it all went down? Do you think yeah. like it was all strategized? Or do you think it was even right for him to step in a ring with knowing he was sick and could potentially pass COVID to hundreds of people? I don't know? think that he knew he had COVID. Yeah. I think that he was sick based off of what I saw. So aside from all that, I have always said I like the Ace family because I used to watch their videos all the time when they were out the, doing their pranks. But then, like, obviously, as the fame and their progression and every, the growth, like, they got a lot of push, a lot of, like, backlash on who they are as a family, all that drama with their home, all that stuff. So we've, we, whatever, diagnosed all that stuff. I truly just don't care for them. I don't watch them anymore, whatever. But I, they'll come and stumble across my thing, and I'm just like, you know, good for them. They're still doing well, whatever. Like, wish them the best. But at the same time, I know that Austin, just based off of what I've seen, he's a very good businessman. Like, this guy can strategize and play his politics correctly and so i even the way that this whole untold story was filmed like choreography the choreography behind it the music behind it like leading up to the end which he then announced that he's going to continue to fight with this new program or what a sponsorship company, whatever yeah, company yeah. in europe and like he's gonna fight potentially yeah. gib again all that was just like the bang on the end you feel me like the like the uh, this is what it all it led all came to. together to that yeah. yeah so it's like it's it's nice to see that because, like, you're just like, oh, I see what you did there, you know? But obviously, glad he's okay because he clearly was sick. But there were also a lot of things within that process. I mean, he shouldn't have fought. He lied to the commission about it or, like, was sneaky about it. Cause you, so what's all that? How does that work? So a commission is basically there when it's a pro-regulated fight or a regulated fight for that matter. And they basically oversee everything. They oversee the fighters. They make sure the fighters are getting, you know, their fair share of whatever as far as, like, not getting um, injured by someone cheating or et cetera like that. They kind of oversee everything, right? And 
Basically, Austin comes out and is like, yo, yeah, the whole time I was feeling like I was yakking in the car, which is hella funny because there, it leading up to the documentary thing being released, there was this point where Catherine yells like, stop the bus! Today, Catherine and my team were literally yelling at the driver to just let me out to get some fresh air. So I finally got off the Sprinter, I pulled Yogi, my coach aside, and I basically told him how I was feeling. Yo! Can we, can we? Yeah, we can just get out right here, baby. We're we not feeling good. God. Stupid, man. We gotta stop it. He's not feeling good, please. Stop the car! And oh, I yeah. was like, when I watched it, I was like, I cannot wait until this documentary comes out. What the f That sounded crazy. Like, it seemed like someone was dying. Poor guy just felt sick and wanted them to stop the bus get so he can, yeah, I can get some air, bro. So that was hella funny. But basically, like, it all led up to him feeling like shit right before the fight. And it's scary because, like, a lot of, I'm sure a lot of fighters have hid sicknesses. You know, some fighters have crazy weight cuts where they can't even get on the scale before the fight. And they have to kind of hide that, you know, for them to be able to fight. And they know millions of dollars is tied into this. Austin cannot out last minute right before he's about to fight and say whatever but this is why there's fighters replacement fighters that come in if you're feeling sick if you get injured etc but like <clears throat> like i guess he ha he called his doctor his private doctor that handles all their for him and the doctor goes yeah we will send a doctor over there to get you an iv and get you hooked up to an iv this is illegal as him admitting this is illegal as that's why he wanted to be make it very clear that the commission was not in cahoots with this. They had no idea or his got sued, right? So they come in secretly. They sneak in a whole IV system. They go to another room and they plug him up to the IV. The reason why this is cheating is, is because you can have an unfair advantage over a depleted one of the, the, the fighter that you're fighting, bro. The guy had probably w went through a weight cut, lost all this weight. He needed that IV too. So you have the advantage. Electrolytes. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So like when you get plugged to an IV, you're getting all these nutrients and it's making you better and stronger and faster and whatever. So like he chalked it up to, I needed this because I was sick and it brought me back to uh, just like my median, you know, because after you take an IV, you're not supposed to fight, you know? Yeah. But and you're not a hundred percent better either. Exactly. Cause you are sick, but who knows? knows if he was sick you feel me and like people the reason why it's banned pre-fight is because in terms of doping right like getting like you know steroids and shit, i'm not saying he's on steroids he probably could be but a lot of fighters get caught using ivs and that will change blood test results uh urine tests uh it would hide prohibited substances and it will clear the body because and I don't know how they do it, but in regulated fights, you pee, you pee in a cup before and after the fight. So if he was on PEDs, mm -hmm. that could have easily flushed that out. So God forbid it came out in the future. Oh my God, if it came out like he pissed hot, he could be like, yeah, I took an IV or something, you know, based on whatever circumstance because I was feeling like it could be a cover up and he could be G-ing it up, but odds are he was feeling sick. He did kind of cheat by getting the IV in there, but I was like more so surprised that he'd even admit that. Because yeah. Gib beat he him still got with IV. Yeah. Yeah. So he was. I, like, bro, I he think basically. He was sick. I think he wasn't feeling yeah. well. I just think that he. That's cheating, though. I mean, a lot was on the line. He couldn't not fight, especially given his reputation prior with like social gloves and the fight that he, when he fought. Um, what is that little child called? Who was his name? Uh, yeah, Bryce Hall. Yeah, Bryce Hall. Like, there was so much, like, just drama child. after that. Yeah, and so, like, I feel like he had a lot on the line. Obviously, everything leading up to it, too. It's like, and you have to, you gotta, you know. And he ta fight. Austin talked about, like, it's not about the fact that I'm, like, nervous or anything like that. Because he's around so many events in the past, like. I don't think he was audiences. nervous at all. I hate no. people that are saying that. No, and so he touched on how he, like, came out, even with YG, and, like, he was just not, he was, like, fumbling getting there. It kind of did look like he wasn't that hyphy walking in, but I he thought he was just focused. Well. No, he didn't look well. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Oh, who knows, right? I mean, I think it's dangerous to put your body through that. Your health should always come first. You should always prioritize yourself, not a game. And then to see, and then it was interesting because, like, after he was, like, I went, they, like, they took him to the am through the ambulance, and then he got positive for and he was like, I just wanted to go back home to my family. But, like, you're positive for COVID. So, but whatever. At this point, everyone was, like, 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, co everyone was exposed to him. Um, so I just think the whole, I mean, my whole theory with his just like untold story, that was just very strategic. It's he's a strategic man who's very well, you know, he's self-made. He, he brought his, with he his really family did, yeah. from bottom up and like they really, they, they really, really capitalized off of their, their whole YouTube channel and like they did well. And so given the nuances of like all the fraud in between and all that drama in between and all the, who knows, who knows, right? That life is not easy to maintain, but um, I think it's just when it comes to things like this and how it ended with him, like, yeah, I'm going to fight again, by the way, even though my wife and I talked about it, she didn't want me to do it. But then she's like, you know what? You can't go out like that. Like, you got to go back and show him that, like, who, you know, you're a competitive man. Shout you are Catherine, an athlete. Right? You're an athlete. Yeah. yeah, Catherine holding her man down, yeah, you know? Like, go back out there and beat it. Yeah, but, <laughs> like, and I feel him on the sense where, like, bro couldn't just pull out of a fight. And, like, a lot of people are just waiting and praying on his downfall to call him a and like say, oh, you pulled out versus Gibb because you knew he was going to knock you out. So I feel like his pride and his ego didn't let him, which like you got to be a real man to get in the ring sick. I f with that tough. Yeah. But also in the game of boxing, this is such a, uh, a prevalent thing that happens. Like it happens so much where fighters pull out a day before, a week before a fight and you have a replacement fighter, bro. Because like instead, if you just pulled out, they get their fair share of hate regardless. Mm -hmm. The Ace family, it's either you love them or you hate them. Like, I was watching his videos, uh, hit the comments on his videos, everybody's like, you put everyone in danger for COVID. Which, granted, like, yeah, he kind of did. But it's like, they're waiting on his downfall. So, like, the the sh talk wouldn't be elevated that much. Yeah. Like, pull out of the fight, bruh. Yeah. And then pull out of the fight. Reschedule the fight with Gib. If he won that fight after, it would be perfect. Reschedule like all of these other boxers do all the time. Yeah, just reschedule. Jake Paul, Tommy Fury got rescheduled three or four times because Tommy kept getting injured, broken rib, this, problems with his visa, etc. And then they finally fought. And then it went the way it went. It's like, if he pulled out of the fight, got 100% okay, and then came in and just beat the brakes off of Gibb if he was able to do that, it would have been a better story. But now they got a second fight. Yeah. There's been a little bit of a documentary crazy. Oh, you won. Because I wasn't feeling a hundred. Yeah, I was gonna so say. When do I you feel think a like in a beach yell? That's what I'm saying. Do you think this is all kind of like, in a, a sense, storm. like this is why I lost? Yeah, you're, you're bro. Not because you're good. Because even while he was getting the IV, he was talking about I just got to get in there quick, knock him out quick, knock get him it out over quick. with. Yeah, and, and he then, did kind of put him down in the beginning. Yeah, round. but yeah. then he also said like in his mind he was thinking, please just stay down. So it's like, why would he? You know, put himself out there like that, and he no also, one he was going to get the backlash regardless. So it's like maybe he was sick. I think he know? probably was sick. And he's did his an best. athlete. Yeah. You know, he got a heart of a lion probably, bro, where he's like, you know what? And, yeah. bro, he's trying to get paid. He put on this whole event. You yeah. feel me? Because like, you're right. The Ace family gets their hate regardless. Like, the fair like, It wouldn't share. have been that crazy People for come him. for them no matter what. Yeah. So it's like it's really just a matter of, like, he got in there and put himself at risk, if anything. Yeah. You know, it's dangerous if and you're not of, feeling well. And a lot of people are just like, you put other people at risk with COVID and yeah. You feel me? But also, like, like, just take the test real quick, and then you could have just told everybody you're positive for COVID, got to reschedule. Yeah. See you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> why? Like, I, why didn't you think of Why didn't you just take the test? I know. And then That's like maybe, everyone's first, like, instinct now. The second I have a little runny nose, let me just test for COVID. It's like, so normal now. It's about bread, too, yeah. bro. And a lot I, of money into it. He wants to get paid, too. 100%. Like, if he didn't fight, then there mm -hmm. goes the whole event. And then they traveled right after. I went to Dubai, all this stuff, too. So. Did they? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I saw That's he and I was like, they were recently. This just developed. makes for a great, bro. There's so many little twists and turns in this Ace Family. But shout out to them. They're still going hard. So it ends with he's going to be fighting in Europe. Yep. We don't know who he's fighting. Essentially, potentially Gibb, because I saw that there was another announcement, something within those lines. But this time he wants to enter as, not as a businessman, a contract. Creator. He's just trying to enter as Austin McBroom. Fighting. You know, Austin McBroom, the fighter, the athlete. And, you know, he wants to come back harder and hopefully won't get COVID this time. You think he's going to get that dub? I really don't know. I don't know about fighting like that. Uh, bro, Gibb is a good fighter, Neil. So I yeah. got to put you on Gibb, yeah. the big Gibber. I saw that, and I yeah. saw, you know, him go down through Gibb. And now but shout out to him, yeah. honestly, before we cut this shit, It's like you're fighting a really hard fight. Gibb is a hard fight for anyone, bro. Is he like a professional fighter? I don't know if he's pro yet, but he's damn good for YouTubers, bro. Mm, yeah. So shout out to him, bro. Yeah, or maybe he got lucky because Austin was sick. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Neil. I don't know. I don't know. But I, yeah, I'll watch the next one. We'll both be we'll there. See. Where can they find us, Neil? In Europe at the fight. Let's go. <laughs> YouTube.com slash the Demon Podcast TDP. We out. We out.